Hello, Wolfpack families. Thank you for joining us. My name is Carrie Fowler, and I'm the Director of Parent and Family Services. Today, I'm excited to partner with the Career Development Center to highlight the resources and support available to our students. I am pleased to introduce our feature presenter, the Director of Professional Development with Career Development, Ms. Marcy Bullock. Thank you so much, Carrie, and welcome families. It's great to have about a half hour of your time today to share with you some tips on helping to make your students' career goals a reality. And I realize that all of you are thinking about what's gonna be happening next. There's a lot of excitement, there's anticipation, and I wanna give you some wonderful tips today that will help you to be an ally, as Carrie said in your student's journey. So I am the Director of Professional Development. Feel free to follow me on social media and I would like to introduce my partner today, our graduate student, Savannah Russell. Hi, um, I'm Savannah Russell. I'm a recent undergrad from NC State and now I'm a graduate assistant in the Career Development Center. We're so happy to have you here, Savannah. So when we get to the questions, I know you'll offer your perspective. And my perspective is one as a professional development director, as an instructor here at NC State on career exploration. Savannah took my class and on the whole transition to the workforce. I'm also a parent of a former college graduate from NC State, as well as another university down the road. So I know what it is like to be a stakeholder holder in your student's life. So I want to offer you a couple of tips here from my heart as a mom, and that is together and nudge. I love the idea of working together as a family, and the nudge idea seems very subtle. It's not pressuring. It's not intense. And as I say in the second part, judge, a lot of times we see our college students are comparing themselves to other people and feeling like they are being judged. And there's a lot of mental health crises going on. If you haven't heard the Facebook Live recording from the Counseling Center, you 100% should listen to that as well. So as a team, as a family, we're going to give you some tips today for nudging subtly to help your student be successful. Right now, let's just address the elephant in the room. There's a lot of paralysis going on with college students across the entire globe due to the economy. Some people have the idea, it's not worth it. I, I shouldn't be looking for internships or co-ops or jobs. There's no hiring going on. I've seen people get laid off. Why should I even try? And so across the board, when we look at our national associations of colleges and employers, we're seeing that fewer students are signing up for things because of that paralysis. And we find it's more challenging to get students motivated. This is where you can come in with the together and nudge notion. When students are deleting emails and not showing up for things, it is only hurting them. And the more effort that your student puts in to the decision on what they should be when they grow up and the transition to the workforce, the higher their probability of success. So what's really exciting is that today you're going to learn about all of the different programs and services that they can take advantage of to increase that probability. And the reality is already we're on week seven of the semester. We've had over 300 companies coming to our virtual career fairs, and many of them are seeking students for co-ops and internships. Over 11,000 student meetings have happened at these virtual career fairs. This is our wonderful team. We are here virtually in the fall of 2020. Our office is also open. If a student wants to walk in, we have masks and plexiglass, but all of our services are being offered virtually. That includes one-on-one -on -one support, that includes groups, and that includes some of the technology programs that I'm going to offer to you today. So there is a lot going on that students can be doing during this difficult time to make themselves stand apart. 
The reality is 60% of college freshmen do not have a firm vision on their career goals. They often change their major, they don't have a plan, and they can be thinking to themselves that whole thing about the pressure, oh my goodness, what if I make the wrong choice? And then that can be paralyzing. So we want to reassure them that there's nothing wrong with them for making uh, a choice and then changing their mind. Let's think about this. Families, when you were 18 years old, how many of you knew what you'd be doing today? Now, if I had you in a room, I bet you I'd see a few hands go up out of the thousand people that are watching this live because a lot of things change and many jobs that will exist when your students graduate don't even exist today. So it is reassuring for students to realize that there is no one perfect career that they have to know the day they start at NC State as a entering first year student, that your major will guide you into a career. Let's be real about that. When we look at our survey, we see engineering majors that are working as public relation assistants and communications majors that are working as attorneys. Your career choices are lifelong decisions. I call your 20s your trying 20s for a reason because you get to try lots of things and it's trying. So all of the myths that you see on this slide, we want to allay those fears for students. When students come in, they usually fall in one of these three categories. And for a second, just think about where your student is. And I'm gonna ask Savannah to tell a little bit about her journey and where she started. Yeah, so when I first started, um, I took Miss Bullock's class as a freshman going in. And I was one of the rare freshmen. I knew exactly what I wanted to do in life. And although that's changed a little bit, my kind of goal has still remained the same. And so I fit it in the um, type three kind of student. I was ready to make informed decisions about my education and my career. And the reason I decided to take Ms. Bullock's class had a lot to do with that. I wanted to make sure that the career that I was pursuing and what I thought I wanted to do was actually a good fit for my personality and my majors were a good fit too. Thank you, Savannah, for that real life story. And for students that are in categories one and two, we are 100% here to help you. So the class that Savannah was referring to is called USC 202. It is the, what am I gonna be when I grow up? Answer class. And for 15 weeks, we explore who you are as a person with your interests, with your values, with your personality, and where are you curious? And then we also help you to find a mentor in a career that you're thinking about and you get to interview that person and learn about that career. I like to show this diagram to to families that are thinking about the reflection notion of students. And I know many of your students are living with you now because they've left campus. This would be a wonderful conversation for dinner tonight is to think about the ideal career. And again, I just told you that they don't have to know this young and that there's many jobs that don't exist now that will when they graduate. However, it's kind of fun to see how it's evolved. Maybe from the first time they said at age five, I want to be a fireman or a ballerina to the time when they're in college to the time when they're actually graduating and going in to the professional world. The first thing that's fun to talk about at dinner tonight is what are you really good at? Sometimes students struggle with this. The answer about my skills, my competencies, wait, I am my worst critic. I'm not sure what I'm good at. And stakeholders in these students' lives can see things that they don't see. I know as a mom, I was a stakeholder in both of my daughter's life. And when my daughter came to me and said, I'm going to major in engineering, I swallowed and smiled and said, go for it. And then two weeks later, she emailed me and said, when can I change my major? So listening to what people are good at, letting them work through the kinks of figuring out what their passions or curiosity are. Honestly, I like the word curiosity better 
when this is the question for dinner tonight when you are just walking in nature which is a great thing to do now during covid because it is safe and socially distant what are you really curious about what are your interests when do you find that time really flies by for you and even values what kind of problems do you want to solve when we take these three circles and we intersect them in the middle we find where the labor market needs you okay so for example when I was a college student at UC San Diego. I love soccer. I was good at soccer and it was important to me, but nobody needed me to be on the USA Women's National Team. So I found a job and now years later, I'm using exactly that nudge I got from college, which was I love to lead people. I love to help people figure out their potential. Even though I'm not doing it on a field, I'm doing it in another setting. And that's where you can take those three circles Find where the labor market needs you, and that's your ideal career. Unfortunately, due to a Gallup poll, only 21% of people have found the intersection between their abilities, passions, and values, and have found a career that they're fully engaged in. That's why asking these questions is so important and watching them evolve. Now, as a stakeholder in their life, it's going to be really hard for you to do like I did, the smile and swallow, when you might think that they're making a bad decision and they have to work through it on their own. That's why we want you to use our services and programs because our career counselors and coaches do not have any bias. Let's face it, we do. It's impossible not to. We've known these humans since they were born in many cases. So we are offering career coaching and counseling for all of your students to help them on this road. So here is our overview of the wonderful things that we offer. I'm going to get into several of these today. They're all listed on our website. They're all listed on our social media, Career Development Center, and you can help them by encouraging them to subscribe to some of these things, checking out the Instagram feed that's updated with stories every single week. And the latest one was all about how to set up your virtual career fair visit all kinds of information there. So overview of all the services that we offer, and I'm gonna get into real specific ones here in a moment, but feel free to just take a screenshot of this page. If I don't hit on all of them, you can ask at the end because Becca is monitoring the questions right now and she's gonna make sure that I answer them. Now, if I was a family member, the first thing I would do right now is grab my phone and subscribe to Wolfpack Career Chats. You can go directly to the Go link or you can look on whatever Spotify, iTunes you use and you can find our weekly updates on career topics, current information. And I am mentioning two episodes that are must listens for all family members. The first one, we have over 70 episodes. They come out every Tuesday. We spotlight them on the Instagram feed for the Career Development Center. And I'll maybe ask Savannah to or Becca to type in the um, Instagram handle so that you can find that. And what we do is Episode number 56, I have to mention that one because I interviewed Lindsay Pollock, who is a New York Times bestselling author, who talks all about specific strategies college students can use right now during the pandemic to find the internship or job that they most desire. Her tips are amazing. And then number 67 is Dr. Kelly Laraway talking about how to set up your first virtual career fair interaction, which can be a little bit intimidating because this is the first semester we've ever had virtual career fairs. So 100% um, get on Wolfpack Career Chats and you will enjoy some inspirational stories, many of which are from alumni who have overcome obstacles. The PAC pros program. All right. All your student needs to do is log on to the Career Development Center and click on Get Experience, and they will see how to enroll in the Digital PAC Pros Certification Program. What this is, is it is a career readiness program for students where the students will be able to go through a series of videos and modules. And then once they complete all of the videos and modules, they get a certificate 
signed by their college dean that they can document on their resume. It's so exciting. We have our career ambassadors involved in this. We have employers involved in this. And overall, the whole program takes about six hours to complete. So let's do the math on that. Watch Netflix or get PAC Pro certified. I hope your students will choose the latter. I have mentioned career fairs. There is an app that you and your students can download called Career Fair Plus. This is where a student will register for their career fair and they will be able to set up 10 minute meetings with those 300 companies that I mentioned. And question mark 11,000 students meeting? The answer is yes. That's how many who have already taken advantage of our career fairs. And we have more coming up. When you go to our website, you will be able to see that the College of Management career fair is starting this week. And there are many openings for students to make connections with companies and to have an opportunity to network, even if they're younger, to start building a relationship with a recruiter. Next up is Savannah to talk about the Career Identity Program. Yeah, so the Career Identity Program is a program that is now offered online and for students to be able to really figure out what they want to do and learn about themselves and kind of figure out how they can um, accomplish what Ms. Bullock was going over, um, the intersection of your passions and your skills and your values, like all coming together in one. And it really allows the students to get an opportunity to also meet one-on-one -on -one with um, career coaches, which is something that I've done for some freshmen as well, helping them kind of get their foot in the door in the career center and kind of learn about our services as well as helping learn about themselves. Excellent, Savannah. And I know you are doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with students right now in the Career Identity Program. The way that students enroll in this, again, is to go to the Career Development Center webpage and just select Career Exploration. And students will log in with their Unity ID and password, and they will enter a Moodle site, which is our online course management system. And once they are enrolled, it will be very clear to them how to get gold certified in career identity. We have it all gamified this year. So it's almost like a leaderboard that they would be playing on a video game, but instead they're learning about what they should do with their futures. We already have over 100 students enrolled in career identity. And again, when they finish this, they will get a certificate. Not every student can take a career exploration class for credit, but now career identity and exploration is available to every student on our campus, regardless of their major. This is what the course website looks like. Again, it's not a course for credit. It's called a Moodle project space, and it's very clear how to enter this, how to explore, research, and create to make an informed decision and create a plan for your future. And this is that gold certification, silver, they can decide how many points they want on the leaderboard and compete with each other. Brand new, hot off the press, just got launched one week ago and already 100 students are enrolled. I'm so proud of Courtney, Courtney Mulvaney who set this up. She is my colleague in the Career Center who Savannah works with. She has set up a values digital clarification system where on this slide, I took a screenshot and you can see the student will be identifying their top six values and they can move them around and they can change. And these are out of 30 plus values. So it's really helping the student to make decisions about what's important to them and then to get the support with the one-on-one -on -one virtual coaching. Students also complete focus two when they're in career identity, but they can go straight to the Career Development Center and go to career assessments and complete this assess assessment. They do have to authenticate again with their Unity ID and password, so the parents and families don't have access to focus two. But this is your typical 
assessment that maybe someone when they were in high school took one and they said, oh my gosh, assessments, those don't help me. It told me I should be a bus driver. It was a waste of time. What's unique about Focus 2 is we vetted all of our vendors and chose this assessment because it is mapped to all the careers and we can't keep them all in our head and it's mapped to all of our majors. So based on the answers that a student gives to this 40 minute assessment, they'll get a whole list of possibilities that they can then discuss with their career coach. As students progress in their college career, many of them would like to get career-related experience and experiential education. We have one of the top co-op programs in the entire country, which is where a student will alternate semesters of full-time study, where they're getting paid, and then they will come back to campus for full-time to be a student. So they extend their graduation one year. We offer that in all majors, and students can go to our co-op co-op link on the website to begin to explore the first session they need to complete in order to be eligible for the co-op, typically after their sophomore or junior year. I've talked to some students who have done some amazing experiences in co-op. One of my former students, Todd Goldfarb, was working at BMW, and he graduated a year later, then had the opportunity to decide, do I want to work at BMW? I basically had a year-long interview there. And if I made a great first impression and they got to watch my work ethic and see my skills, maybe they'll offer me the job, which they did. So it's a wonderful way to get a foot in the door. Some students don't have the opportunity to do a co-op and delay graduation, so they also will choose an internship. Internships are being advertised now on EPAC, which is our database of opportunities for students. Again, I keep saying they log in because that's how students find all of our information. If you just Google EPAC on the NC State homepage, students will be able to find all the internships listed. They'll be able to set up an appointment with their career counselor. They'll be able to set up times in the virtual career fairs and also set up interviews for internships and jobs. Internships may be for credit. That will be dependent on their academic advisor making a decision on whether or not it is scholarly. And some of the majors at NC State, for example, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism, they require internships, which are usually in the summer, but can be part-time during the year. And most are paid. We do have some exceptions for nonprofits, but I strongly encourage students to get career career related experience, it's the best way to test out the waters. And Savannah, I'm going to turn back to you for a moment because I know you have the opportunity to do some internships. Would you like to comment on that to encourage the families to take advantage of career related experience? Yeah, for sure. I would 10 out of 10 recommend internships for your students. They're a really great way to really explore the different kinds of career fields and kind of really see what the job will be like afterwards. So um, I've had a couple different internships. So I've had one in the Career Center doing social media and really getting to see what a social media job kind of looks like and what that internship was like. And then I've also worked for um, a political party. And then that really allowed me to see that in a lot of positions and internships, you're required to wear a lot of different hats. So my internships were never the kind that were like, the stereotypical ones you've heard about in movies and TV shows where it's like you run and get coffee. I never did any of that, but I was required to wear a lot of different hats and do a lot of different things. And as an intern, you're kind of a catch all for a lot of the smaller things that the company or people may need help with. So you could be asked to do various things outside of the job description, but that is okay. And it's a really great learning opportunity. 100%. And some students come back from internships saying, this has reinforced, I'm on the right path, hooray, I'm, I'm feeling confident. Or they come back and say, if I had to pipette one more moment, I will go absolutely bonkers. And they realize maybe they want to change out of their biology major, or maybe they volunteer at a hospital, they're pre-med, and they realize that being around sick people is not something they enjoy. The only way you can find that out is to put that toe or ankle in the water. During a semester where students are on campus, we also have externships where students over breaks can shadow employees at different companies. We've gone out to 
to Research Triangle Institute and Volvo and give students that field trip experience. Also, we have a wonderful program on our campus, which is undergraduate research. That's another way that students can test the waters out. So family members, you 100% can help your students by encouraging them. And this is our slide that helps us remind all the things that we just said in the last half hour. Offer support, offer encouragement. And when I say encourage networking, what I mean is encourage your students to reach out and connect to alumni and just ask questions. People love to give advice. You can give some general reminders about all of the different resources you learned about today. And one of the things I learned is timing is everything. So you got to catch them at the right moment where they're ready for it, not when they have a test the next day and they're feeling stressed. But go ahead and discuss their fears. Talk up all the great resources you learned about today in just one step at a time. If they do one thing after today, maybe they enroll in career identity because they're not exactly sure of their goal or maybe like Savannah they know their goal and instead they enroll in PAC pros to get that extra career readiness certificate celebrate their success how's that PAC pros going look at you on the leaderboard stay informed by listening to the podcast and finally this is where our office is located so we are open as I mentioned in Pullen Hall we do have a wonderful website that will show you all of the changes that have been made so you can take a if someone wants to type that in the chat careers.dasa.ncsu.edu slash coronavirus it'll show you how everything has gone virtual. And just to remind you, EPAC is the way that students can schedule their one-on-one -on -one appointments. So I'm now going to throw it over to Becca for our questions. Um, hi, Marcy. Our first question is, what resources, if any, are available to students for the first year after they graduate? Yes, and I forgot to say Gabby, Gabby and Rebecca are here, and I think their parents may even be on this call. They're amazing. I love them both. They're in my class. Um, so I would say one year after graduation, yes, they 100% can use the Career Development Center. And then after that, we have our alumni career counselor, which is Anna Valasia. She works in our alumni office. And when you are a member of the Alumni Society, you can also see her. So great question. Thank you, Gabby. And then next question, what services or programs would you recommend to a freshman who hasn't yet secured their first internship? Yes, thank you for that one, Gabby and Rebecca. What services if they haven't secured an internship? I would begin with career identity if they are not sure of the direction they want to go. For first year students, this is a wonderful way to introduce yourself to the whole career decision making process. And you'll get that one on one attention through um, Savannah or one of the other people who are helping with the career coaching. So I think career identity is the number one choice for a freshman. Awesome. And then next question is about the Wolfpack professional clothing closet. Um, parents are wondering if it's still available this semester despite classes being moved online. And if so, how is it being accessed? Ooh, thank you for asking me that because I said make sure to ask me if I forgot to say something on this slide. And I may not have mentioned the Wolfpack career um, professional closet, but we do still have it. My colleague Edith in the Career Development Center is in charge of it. And just yesterday, someone called and said, we want to make a donation. So we have a great opportunity for people that are looking for professional clothing and they can call our office and they can schedule a time to come in and be very safe by trying on their clothes with social distance measures. And we are are offering the professional clothing closet. So that is really helpful for students that are stretched financially. We even have Feed the Pack, which is for students that are having trouble, have enough money for their food. We have Pack Essentials, which I'm on that team. It's outside of the Career Development Center. But if you Google Pack Essentials, we also have grants for students that lost their jobs during COVID that they can um, apply for. 
Thank you so much. Um, so what recommendations do you have for seniors applying to companies with hiring freezes due to COVID-19? Okay, so first recommendation, because I don't have enough time, is listen to the podcast with Lindsay Pollack. I'm sorry, I got to refer you to that. But my quick answer is there are a lot of companies hiring. Yes, some are doing freezes. Yes, some are having virtual and some are hiring. Like I said, 300 companies have already come to the career fair. If you think about it right now, the companies such as Amazon, such as healthcare, um, all the places, you know, that are revving up, it's a little different in some industries where there have been some layoffs. So one of the things in the podcast that's mentioned is to network. And that's so important. You can go straight to LinkedIn and you can look at NC State alumni who have studied what you studied or who have are working in the industry you want to work in. Let's say you want to work in IT and you're thinking, oh, I'd love to work at Red Hat or SAS. And you go in with that filter you get all these alums that are working in that field. And basically what you do is you offer to have a 15 minute Zoom tea with them where you ask them questions in an informational interview. And that can really help seniors to make connections for their job after graduation. Thanks Marcy. And next question is, as a parent, how can I help my student network with those I know professionally without overstepping? Oh, I love that question because um, it's hard. You don't want to be too pushy. Like you've got to talk to Auntie Sue. Oh my gosh, didn't you know she's hiring in pharmaceutical sales? And, and the, the student is like, oh my gosh, mom, leave me alone. So I think that whole idea of being um, kind of the, the together and nudge, it's finding the right time. And sometimes with my daughter, it was always on a walk and we'd be away from the phone. We'd be away from other distractions and we'd start talking. We would begin the conversation about the future. How are you feeling about, you know, next summer and just letting the emotions come through. And then, you know, we have a connection. Did you, do you remember that, um, that dad's colleague um, at work, actually his neighbor is the hiring manager over at um, ABC News. And I know you want to go into communications. I'm sure he'd be willing to talk to you. Like, how do you feel about talking to him? Um, a lot of times people love to give advice. Uh, you know, you can even say, I went to this webinar over at NC State and I heard this wacky lady over in professional development saying, you should be networking. Have you ever heard about it? And then you can also use our YouTube channel. Um, we are adding videos to our Career Development Center YouTube station. And that will be posted on our website. Right now we have one on virtual career fairs. There'll be one on networking and you can say, check out that networking video. It might give you some great tips. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, so this next one is a two part question. Aside from resume building skills, does the Career Development Center help with building LinkedIn profiles as well? Are there any LinkedIn learning opportunities through NC State for certain certifications? Yes, thank you for that great two part question. The Career Development Center does offer help building LinkedIn profiles. And on that YouTube station that I just mentioned, there will be a video uploaded very shortly and it's a three part LinkedIn presentation. Every single one of the presentations are 10 minutes or less. And in the one I just recorded that will be coming up very soon, it's my top five favorite LinkedIn profiles. And what I mentioned, and I'm going to give you a spoiler alert if you don't have time to watch the video, is you need to have uh, your preferred pronouns on your LinkedIn. You need to write articles that show that you are engaged and make comments. And the other third secret tip is have a Balashi headliner and summary. And we explain exactly what that means in those video tutorials. And they can schedule that EPAC appointment with their career coach. There's one assigned to every single college. So let's say you're in College of Sciences. When you go in EPAC, you'll see Wes Wade's schedule because he's your career counselor. And he was one of those pictures that I showed you on that Zoom view of our whole office. If you're in 
in humanities and social science, you'll see Sarah Wild. And each of those people, when you schedule the appointment, can help you with their LinkedIn profile. And what was the second part of that question again? The second part of that question was asking if there are any learning opportunities offered through NC State about certifications through LinkedIn. Yeah, so LinkedIn has LinkedIn learning, and I think that might be what you're getting at. And when students authenticate through NC State, they see the LinkedIn learning modules and they can complete those. And immediately on their profile, when they complete the quizzes, it shows they're certified in Microsoft Office or whatever the topic was. The most recent one I listened to was on virtual interviewing because I'm always looking for other people's ideas. I've worked with hiring managers for the last 30 years. So I go to national conferences and I hear what they're looking for as talent acquisition leaders hiring college grads. I also listen to one on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So make sure that your students know they have access to LinkedIn learning and that they can get certifications on their LinkedIn profile when they complete it. A lot of people did that over the summer if their internships got canceled and then they were still making themselves look very vibrant and staying on top of things by bettering themselves and sharpening their saw. That's awesome, Marcy. We have time for one more question. And that question is how and where can students sign up for an appointment with a career advisor? they will go to EPAC. So when you go on to the NC State website, go ahead and just Google EPAC and a student will log in with their Unity ID and password and that is where they will submit their profile. So they'll put in their major, they'll put in all the information about the industries they're interested in, do they want to relocate, they can upload a resume to EPAC as well if they desire. And once they fill that profile out, they have the option that says schedule an appointment and it's usually under the shortcuts menu on the right hand side of EPAC and that that is a great place to start is to make that appointment with that person assigned to your college. I think that was our last question, right, Gabby and Becca? You've been doing such a great job behind the scenes. And Savannah, you are awesome. And I want to thank everyone and Carrie for partnering with us today. We literally talked about doing this a year ago, and it's been such a pleasure to talk with all of you. Thank you so much, Marcy. I just have one quick follow up. One thing for our families that we do um, during our parents and families weekend and our spring fling is we offer families the opportunity to donate towards the um, clothing closet, the style for success. Could you just, I know you touched on someone that was interested in making a donation, but can you tell us how, especially right now, those families can make those donations? I know a lot of people are going through the their closets and, and cleaning things out. And so how can they make those don donations? Yeah, they would need to schedule a time with Edith. She's typically in the office on Wednesday. So if they call 515-2396, they'll be able to schedule a time to um, meet up with her and have things unloaded from the car and then be placed and available for the students. Perfect, thank you so much. Yeah, this has been so fun. Thank you for having me, Carrie, Becca, um, Gabby, you're awesome. Savannah, thank you so much for your student perspective. And also Kara Doyle, who heads up our social media and communication team, has been instrumental in this because I don't have Facebook. So I, I think I made it through somehow. <laughs> You did phenomenally. So did everyone else. I echo the thanks. And we look forward to seeing everyone in two weeks for our next Facebook Live. Thank you and go Pack.